So we actually knew, you all know a carbanion actually. You already knew one before the Grignard or the organolithiums. You've learned about how to deprotonate a terminal alkyne, right? The SP hybridized CH bond, because it makes the really, really stable SP, right? The electrons go into an SP orbital as a negative charge. An SP orbital is closer to the nucleus, the positively charged nucleus. That makes it more stable. So we call these acetylides, or carb an alkyne with a C minus. Right? These are good nucleophiles. You learned about these already, right? It does matter what R group is attached to the Grignard. Whatever R group is attached to the Grignard is the one that's going to add. Now, if you're asking about this, it's actually important to have kind of small ones because let's talk about this reaction. So if this C minus, right, there's a negative charge here. Even though we don't draw it in, there's a negative charge in that carbon. Sometimes you've got to add it yourself. It's going to take that H. The electrons go to the carbon. So now there's a C minus here. Why did we choose this Grignard? What is this molecule? This molecule is meth ethane. What's ethane? Ethane's a gas, right? It's just gone then. So it's easy to get rid of and to make these things, right? So sometimes you choose Grignards where it's easy. The product Grignard, product of it, if it's just acting like a base, which is just acting like a base here, it's just easy to get rid of, right? Here we throw NH2 minus, right? Again, same mechanism, really strong base. We make ammonia. Ammonia is a gas, right? If you're trying to shift equilibrium in any type of reaction, if one of the products is gas, you can just bubble that stuff out, and you're going to push it towards products. Good. So what have we done here? Right, we've made another, right, just another nucleophile. This acetylide ion, this negatively charged carbon species, Right? It's just a nucleophile. So we can add that in, make a tetrahedral intermediate. If you have a tetrahedral intermediate, what do you do? You ask to see, do I have any good leaving groups? If you have no leaving groups, what are you going to do? You're going to protonate. So this is just another nucleophile that's going to react exactly like a Grignard would. So another nucleophile. So we've been talked about, essentially, we're just laying out new types of nucleophiles, N minus nucleophiles, right, to make alcohols. So we've talked about Grignards. We talked about organolithiums. We've talked about acetylides, right? That's that negatively charged carbon, the alkyne. And now we're going to talk about hydrides. We're going to talk about hydrides, H minus. We have two different types. They can come from sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride. Lithium aluminum hydride is much more reactive than sodium borohydride. Now let's think about why that might be. So each of these are a source of H minus, but they have different reactivity. Now why might that be? All right, so I've drawn out lithium aluminum hydride and sodium borohydride. Things to look at. Aluminum and boron are both in the third period in the periodic table, right? They have three valence electrons. If they have a full octet, as they both do here, right? Two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight. They actually have a negative charge. Aluminum has a negative charge and boron has a negative charge. But aluminum and boron are both metal-like. So who do you think owns the electron density? Is the aluminum electron rich or the high or the H is electron rich, do you think? Type it in the thing. Who's electron rich? The boron or the H's? Boron or H? Or aluminum or H? Excellent. The H's are electron rich. They're hydrides. So even though the Lewis structure, right, which of course they lie to us sometimes, the minus charge is on the boron or the minus charge is on aluminum, right? That doesn't actually uh, indicate where the electron density is. It's on the H's. Good. Now the question I have, this is more reactive. Why is that? Why is this more reactive? It's a periodic trend. Where are boron and aluminum on the periodic table? Let's see. Who's on top of who? 
Is it they go boron and then down is aluminum? So who's bigger, aluminum or boron? Aluminum. So let me just draw that to scale here. Very good. Who has better orbital overlap with hydrogen, aluminum or boron? Who is similar in size to hydrogen, aluminum or boron? Boron is, right? Because boron's smaller. Boron H bond, similar size, better sharing slash orbital overlap. So if you can share electrons better, what's that going to do to your reactivity? Is that going to make your bond more reactive or less reactive? It's going to make it less reactive because you're sharing electrons better, right? So aluminum hydride, aluminum H bond is actually more reactive because aluminum is bigger. So this bond is more reactive. It's a weaker bond, right? Because the overall orbital overlap is less. That makes this more reactive than this one. Okay, so then how does this play out? So we just talked about H minus, right? It's the same thing as Grignard, same thing as if it was the acetylide, the negatively charged alkyne. You're adding a hydrogen now. If you have a ketone and you add a hydrogen, what are you going to make? You're going to make a secondary alcohol. When the H adds in, it's just like before. Addition, tetrahedral intermediate. Do I have any good leaving groups? If you do, they leave. If you don't, protonation. So ketones, aldehydes, ketones you get a secondary alcohol, aldehydes you get a primary alcohol. This is with lithium aluminum hydride, the more reactive one. With sodium borohydride, ketones and alcohols, same deal, secondary, primary. Uh-oh, but what happened? All of a sudden you go to esters or carboxylic acids, right? Esters, because they can do resonance, this carbon is not as electrophilic as aldehydes and ketones. Lithium aluminum hydride, because it's more reactive, right, because of that less orbital overlap, will react, right, and keep reacting like a Grignard would, and you add two hydrogens, right, because this is an ester. What happens with sodium borohydride? Absolutely nothing, right, absolutely nothing. What happens if you have a carboxylic acid with a lithium aluminum hydride? It reacts, and you actually get a primary alcohol again. We'll talk about this mechanism later. Also notice the solvent choice changes. Lithium aluminum hydride, we gotta be careful. We have to use non-protic, aprotic solvents, just like a Grignard, right? There's too reactive. Sodium borohydride, look at they're using we're using methanol. We're using methanol to react. It's not that reactive. And this is actually what we're gonna do in lab next week, is this exact reaction with a ketone. That's what we're actually gonna do in lab. So we'll keep thinking about it next week in lab too, how it all works. So let's start looking through some examples and maybe the mechanism for how sodium borohydride and lithium aluminum hydride react. One thing to note here, this is all in one pot. This is one reaction with sodium borohydride. Lithium aluminum hydride is actually a two-step process similar to a Grignard. Step one, step two. What they're trying to show here is that you learned this before with alkenes, that alkenes can be reduced with um, H2 palladium on carbon. I think you hopefully learn this at some point. H2 palladium on carbon will reduce alkenes. And sometimes it'll also reduce uh, carbonyls. But what's nice with sodium borohydride and lithium aluminum hydride, it only reacts with the carbonyls. So we're focused on the carbonyls here. And again, what's gonna happen is we're gonna do an addition, right? Because these are both essentially sources of hydride, H minus. That H minus is gonna react we're going to form a tetrahedral intermediate. If we have a tetrahedral intermediate, we ask ourselves, do we have any good leaving groups? In this case, we do not. We have carbons and hydrogens. And in the sodium borohydride mechanism, we take an H from uh, the solvent. With the lithium aluminum hydride, we have a, actually we have a stop. We stop the reaction here, and then we actually do another reaction with acid. So it basically it plays out the same. 
I'll show the one with acid. It's a bit more complicated than this, but this is what you need to know, and that gets us to this, in this case, secondary alcohol. A ketone with a hydride gives you a secondary alcohol. All right, so here's some words, kind of what I said. So we're focusing on sodium borohydride, the less reactive one, because the boron and the hydrogen have similar size, they have more orbital overlap, making it less reactive. What happens though, the borohydride, and I won't make you draw it like this, I'll let you just draw it as H minus, reacts, just like it's drawn here, breaks the pi bond, and in sodium borohydride, it gets the hydrogen from the solvent, in this case, ethanol, versus a second step of acid. Now, two things, sodium borohydride, just, just as lithium aluminum hydride, notice they have four hydrogens. So each one of these has four H minuses packed with it. So if I wanted to reduce four ketones, I really only need one sodium borohydride because there's four of those, four to one ratio. Now there's some more complicated parts of the mechanism down here, and I'm not interested in you worrying about that. What I do want you to know though, is that because it's NH4, right, in theory, there's four equivalences, four H minuses for every one of these for every, four, every one of these, you can react with four different ketones or aldehydes. That's the take-home message. So what's it look like for lithium aluminum hydride? Again, the same, same deal. There's four hydrides, so there's four equivalents. Right? One of these could react with four aldehydes or ketones. What's the mechanism look like? H minus reacts, breaks the pi bond. Right? Now they're going through a little more complicated mechanism here that I'm not gonna have you worry about just yet. Uh, all this stuff, don't worry about this. What I want you to think of it as is more like this. So let's take from here the version I would like you to do, and maybe I'll just do that on another page. Hold on a second. So this is more complicated. That's not what I'm asking you to know right now. All right, so let's look at the lithium aluminum hydride mechanism. So sometimes they call it LAH, you'll see that. The way I want you to draw it, or I'm worried about basically, is that pretend that this and with sodium borohydride too, this is just H minus. You can literally redraw it as H minus. That's what I want you to do. You do need to recognize that lithium aluminum hydride and sodium borohydride react differently, but as far as knowing that, what I really want you to do is just draw H minus. So you draw H minus, it reacts as a nucleophile, it adds in to the um, carbon of the carbonyl group, which of course is electrophilic. And that gives us, after our first step, They'll give us a tetrahedral intermediate. Tetrahedral intermediate, we ask ourselves, do we have any good leaving groups? We do not. That means the next step is gonna be protonation. So we finished step one, now we're on to step two. And lithium aluminum hydride, they use acid instead of solvent. So the next step is gonna be, if this was an addition step, we added something, now we're gonna do a protonation step. We're gonna grab a hydrogen, a proton, protonation. All right, what do we end up with? Now we have an alcohol. Now, what you need to remember and know is that there's actually, of these, for every one of these, there's actually four of those. So you could draw four of them if you wanted to. It doesn't really matter. Um, but just know that they're, for every one equivalent, you get four H minuses. And then you get the secondary alcohol. This is the way I want you to know the mechanism. All right, so we've talked about lithium aluminum hydride and sodium borohydride. Sodium borohydride, of course, is not as reactive as lithium aluminum hydride. So things that are more reactive, uh, the lithium aluminum hydride actually react with less reactive electrophiles. Um, so if we think about this case, our ketones and aldehydes are pretty similar in reactivity, but they're higher in reactivity, they're more reactive than an ester, right? When I say reactive, I'm referring to the carbon of the carbonyl group, how delta plus these things are. Because this can do resonance, that makes us less reactive. So these are more reactive. So if you have a less ele reactive electrophile, you need a more reactive nucleophile. Lithium aluminum hydride is a more reactive nucleophile. So it will react with a less el reactive electrophile. You can kind of match them up. So sodium borohydride won't react with this, right? But it will react with this. So lithium aluminum hydride, how's it gonna react? What's the mechanism look like when it reacts with an ester? First step is gonna be an addition step. We add in the hydrogen. 
make a tetrahedral intermediate. Form that tetrahedral intermediate, you ask yourself, are there any good leaving groups? In this case, there are. We reform that pi bond, kick out that O minus. That's an elimination reaction. And we've gone from an ester now, and we've formed an aldehyde, right? But wait, with lithium aluminum hydride, there's always four H minuses around. Also, an aldehyde is more reactive than an ester. So if we form this, very similar to when a Grignard reacts with, a ke with an ester, it's going to keep reacting. When you form a ketone, in that case, it's an intermediate. So lithium aluminum hydride, when it reacts with an ester, it forms an aldehyde intermediate. Aldehydes are more reactive than esters. And lithium aluminum hydride comes with four hydrides. So it's going to react again. Another H minus is going to come in and react. And of course, I forgot to add in here, we made this O minus along the way. All right, so for that next, do another addition, another addition reaction. Another H has been added. We ask yourself, do we have any good leaving groups? In this case, we don't. So if we don't, then we need to do a protonation. So now we're on to step two. And so we're finished with step one. Now we're on to step two. So step two is a protonation. So there's, we add acid to this. The O minus is going to react with that. And that's going to give us our product, which in this case is going to be a primary alcohol. H, and they have the two H's there. So the take home, primary alcohol. An ester, when it reacts with lithium aluminum hydride, because it won't react with sodium borohydride, is going to give you a primary alcohol, because you're going to add two H's to the original carbon of the carbonyl group. And you're going to also lose uh, this leaving group, the ester part, and that's going to become an alcohol as well. This will also react with acid along the way. Things to take home. Esters are less reactive than aldehydes and ketones. The carbon the carbonyl group is less electrophilic. Because this is less reactive, you need a more reactive nucleophile to react with it. Lithium aluminum hydride is a more reactive nucleophile because of less orbital overlap, and so that's why you choose as a hydride source to react with it.